everybody, Horfate here, and uh, yeah, I'm finally getting to this. I'm late to the party on <laughs> reacting to the final Tears of the Kingdom trailer. Yay? <laughs> Listen, I have already been spoiled on Twitter that <laughs> Ganondorf is in this trailer. I don't really care, because uh, I'm not super hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. My hype has gone so way downhill, it's ridiculous. Like, I am so not hyped for Tears of the Kingdom to the point where... I only am expecting from this trailer is story information. Um, which I hope they improve on the story because the story was like a, a kind of a weak point in Breath of the Wild. So hope the story's improved and better um, than what it was in Breath of the Wild. Um, I don't have my hopes up. Like I am so not hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. Not to mention it's the first $70 game. I'm so not hyped for this to the point that I'm probably going to wait for a price drop until I get to the kingdom. But that's fine by me because I have a backlog of other games to play. So I'm fine with that because I do have a backlog. Uh, so that's, I'm, I'm fine with taking a break. I want to hear, I probably will want to hear more stuff about the game when it comes out before picking it up immediately for myself unless this final trailer is so intriguing especially story-wise that I would want to pick the game up immediately to avoid spoilers like I did with Deltarune Chapter 2 where, <laughs> where I had to play Deltarune Chapter 2 just immediately just to avoid spoilers on the internet <laughs> so hopefully we get something equivalent to that uh, because here's the thing, even if the gameplay ends up being similar to Breath of the Wild, and I'm not super interested in it, because Breath of the Wild's gameplay I got a lot of problems with, if the story is interesting enough to me, I that's going to be a big win to overlook gameplay stuff a lot of times for me, because I'm like that with, like, Rule of Rose, because Rule of Rose has great atmosphere and characters and story, but the gameplay is, uh, <clears throat> has a lot of problems, but it's so good with everything else it does outside the gameplay that I can kind of overlook a lot of the gameplay problems. Hopefully Tears of the Kingdom does that for me, but let's just get to it. Choose and those things are fighting. Interesting. That's the castle, and this is all it being lifted up into the sky, right? Are we underground there? Zelda, we rely on your knight and that legendary sword he carries. Our last line of defense will be Link. Link. Oh. 
Okay. A rocket launcher? What the fuck? Weird jump back. Cool enemy. I know why I am here. It's something only I can do. Tears are the Do not look away. You witness a king's revival and the birth of his new world. You are not alone. What? Oh, we're playing witch side. Okay. Wait. You are our final hope. Okay, wait a minute. You've caught my interest a little more. Hold on. Uh, my interest is being caught a little more. Hold on. Link. You must find me. Find you? Am I am I eating my words about this uh, being seeming like a seventy dollar DLC? Okay, hold on. Back, 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 back. Uh, where was it? Do, 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 do. There was something I immediately wanted to look back at. It was kind of early in the trailer, I think. Do, 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 do. Maybe it wasn't that early in the trailer. Okay, first of all, there's there's this. <laughs> I love sections like this where you dive through lasers. That's always fun. Do, 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 do. Oh, it was the, um... It was here. We're fighting alongside people in, like, this big battle, it seems. Interesting. Then there's this. This looks like a new species we've never seen in a Zelda game before. Like, that, that's really interesting. Okay. Um... Okay. That, uh, this carriage thing, I'm assuming is part of a side quest. Like, bring these people with a carriage to some place, I'm assuming. Okay. Rocket launcher school. I know why I am here. It's here to Do not look away and the birth of his new Andor! New enemy! But you are not this alone. We're fighting with Sidon. Interesting. What I know it's probably going to be like, this is one area of the game, you team up with Sidon for like one dungeon or area, go to another area, team up with um, the people from Gerudo and um, uh, Dorito and uh, Brain Dying and Goron. <laughs> Areas probably do that and you do that for like a dungeon or an area and then they're probably gone. In other words, like it's probably like one section of the game we're seeing here. Uh, would be my guess. Uh, it does seem where do, 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 do. Gotta go back again. Where? What am I looking for? Is it? This, this like enclosed space lava rail area. I feel like this, I, what I'm hoping they're doing is they're dialing back on being, on allowing the player to go every fucking where in Breath of the Wild. And there's more linear places like what this seems to be. It seems to be a more linear place. Cause here's this problem with Breath of the Wild. 
it lets you go everywhere. And while that seems great, the problem is the game uh, can only do so much with that. There's, it can only, it doesn't go too far in certain difficulties, like a, like some other games with rank, with, go, with scaling difficulty. It doesn't do much with that. It only goes so far with that, and then there's the thing where it, there's other stuff where. You know, it's it's good for the beginning of the game when you're still learning, but at some point when you've gotten used to the game, the game doesn't get super difficult anymore and it doesn't feel like it ever gets to that point again except for even Tide Island where they take away all your stuff. <laughs> um, I am hoping, what I'm seeing from this, what I'm hoping from this, is that the developers of Nintendo realize that we've been playing Breath of the Wild for, what has it been? Oh god, it came out in 2017? It came out in 2017, so it's been six years. Because it's 2023, so it's been six years. Um, so it, yeah, it's been six years. And... What I would hope the developers would realize is that, hey, People have gotten good at Breath of the Wild combat and stuff. Letting them just be able to do everything, like having a ridiculous amount of freedom that Breath of the Wild had, would be stupid. It would be stupid because people are good at Breath of the Wild at this point. In six years, they know how to. We know how to play the game. Okay, people have even replayed Breath of the Wild to get hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. And I've replayed Breath of the Wild. I've played Breath of the Wild like three times over. Two of them being full 100% playthroughs. And I've gotten the Korok Seeds in all three of my playthroughs. All, all the time. They suck. I am very confident in saying Korok Seeds suck. And I really hope that they fix the Korok Seed problem. Um, it feels to me like what they're doing is having a few more... There's going to be, I feel, a, mm, closer to a mix of older Zelda along with Breath of the Wild style is what I feel. Just the feel, feeling I get from this area alone, this enclosed space alone. I feel like we're going to enter places that are going to be more like traditional Zelda. At least that's what I'm hoping. And while still having some, you know, freedom stuff, the, the how Breath of the Wild handled it, I feel. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping. It's the vibe I'm getting from this, and Nintendo is usually pretty good about this stuff. They usually realize that, hey, Nintendo is a company that will, here's the thing, Nintendo is a company that will always change stuff up, even if we don't ask them to. The Paper Mario fans know. Paper Mario fans know the pain. Uh, <laughs> we know. Uh, you know, they'll change stuff up even if we don't ask them to. And they'll change it pretty drastically. Uh, this is one of those games where Tears of the Kingdom needs to be a big change from Breath of the Wild while still feeling similar. That is a hard balance to get. And that's one of the reasons I have been so skeptical about Tears of the Kingdom is because they ha they haven't shown. It, it doesn't feel like. It feels the way they've been advertising this game, right? They've been very secretive until this trailer. And to me, it feels like that reeks of not confidence with Tears of the Kingdom. Unlike Breath of the Wild, where there was a whole E3 showcase that like showed the Great Plateau and everything. It was a lot. It was a lot. It, that was, that E3 showcase of Breath of the Wild, this Great pra Plateau at E3 is what sold, is what like got me onto the Switch and Breath of the Wild. That Great Plateau showcase is what sold me on it. Um, and I, I loved the coverage from E3 when they were showing Breath of the Wild and the Great Plateau. 
um, for the first time. And I was waiting for a moment like that for Tears of the Kingdom for so long. And it feels like this trailer is finally that sort of. There's no E3 this year, so no one gets to play demos and stuff and try it out. Now, another reason that... <laughs> I also like this. Sinkholes and Xant. That's, I wonder if it's going to be like an enemy thing where you fall and you take damage. If it's going to be like just a damage thing where you fall down, take some damage, you spawn back out someplace. Or if it'll actually be like underground areas or something. That would be a much better interesting thing. Uh, another reason I have been so... Weather alert. What the f... No, what do you mean weather alert? No, what's going on? Uh, yeah, sorry. Over here. But uh, another reason I have been so, oh, all right, I'm back. Also, the special weather is that elevated fi fire conditions. Oh, boy, that's okay. Um, but part of the reason I've been, I like this as well, underground. We have the armor because it's obviously very hot, magma and stuff. I do like this aesthetic. I like this a lot. Um, Another reason I have been so skeptical about Tears of the Kingdom and its way of handling secrecy and not showing a lot is because I'm a Sonic fan and I remember how they handled Sonic Forces teasers and trailers before the game was released. Ooh, that was a stat and every time, that was a, every time developers don't show their game well enough. It rem uh, too much. It reminds me of Sonic Forces, and to me, it just screams lack of confidence. That was one of the reasons I was immensely skeptical of Sonic Frontiers before it came out, because they were not showing a lot, and they had the same problem with Sonic Forces, and I don't like Sonic Forces. And that's why I was very skeptical about Sonic Frontiers, despite Bill still being excited. So, again, it is that case of, I've been there before with Sonic Forces. I know when a game company is not showing stuff, when the game is so close to release, because it's only a month away. Dares of Kingdom is only a month away. It screams to me lack of confidence. And, uh, it screams to me lack of confidence, and it just, and I get worried when that happens. I very much do, you know, I, I very much, I, you know, uh, it's not, and again, I just, it's weird, because this is basically what I feel is going to be the end of the Switch. I feel like this, Tears of the Kingdom Mirror, is going to be the end of the Switch. This is going to be the last, like, major game of the Switch. I don't think we're getting another 3D Mario platform over the Switch. I think Tears of the Kingdom is going to be, like, the end, like, the last major Nintendo game for the Switch. Unless they make a new F-Zero game or Star Fox game. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I feel like Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the last major game. For the Switch before they move on to another console, which, by the way, I hope their next console is not just Nintendo Switch 2, because I already have enough problems with Nintendo Switch and Joy-Con drift and other technical difficulties with Nintendo Switch's uh, low, you know, bad performance compared to other console hardware. I'm like, Nintendo, I don't want Nintendo Switch 2. I'm, no, thank you. Um, so I'm assuming that this is like one of their last big games for Nintendo Switch before they move on to another console. And I'm what I'm hoping is that they don't end it in the same way that it started. I, that's the thing. I do not want Tears of the Kingdom to feel like Breath of the Wild back in 2017. Back when Nintendo Switch started. I don't want to feel like we just got the same game at the beginning of the Switch life span and then the end of the Switch. That's another reason I've been so skeptical and worried. It's like... <sighs> but this is Nintendo we're talking about. I just realized it's that typo. 
This eye is dotted over here, but this eye over here is not dotted. What? Okay. Anyways, the brain. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I've been, like, very skeptical about, uh, about Tears of the Kingdom. I, you know, I... And the thing is, it's not just been... The thing is, Nintendo has not done, to, except for Mario and Metroid, <laughs> it doesn't feel like Nintendo has done a lot to make me feel confident in how they've been handling their IPs lately as well. That's also made me very skeptical and worried about Tears of the Kingdom. Pa for example, there's Paper Mario. That's the whole thing. I don't need to get into it because you've probably heard it a million times. <laughs> At least if you're on the internet, you know. There's that. There's... Okay, I haven't played Fire Emblem Engage, but I, uh, yeah, but I kind of hear that like its story is like weaker than other Fire Emblem games, and it's like a mixed bag of stuff. I haven't played Engage. I've only played Three Houses. Three Houses is the only Fire Emblem game I played. There's no F Zero. There's no Star Fox. I'm confident in Pikmin Four, but come on, it's Pikmin. They've always gotten it right. But I do feel like these last. Like, I feel like once 2020 hit, you know, once we got into, like, the lockdown and stuff, once that hit, I feel like once that hit, Nintendo Switch has just dropped in, Nintendo's dropped in quality, I feel, once that happened. Um, and I just haven't felt as confident in Nintendo lately compared to the beginning of the Switch. Um... I'm hoping Tears of the Kingdom and whatever console they're moving on to next after Nintendo Switch, because let's be real, they're going to move on to another one soon. Let's be honest. It's been six years. They're going to move on to another one soon in like another year or two. I... I'm hoping that Tears of the Kingdom... does stuff that's, I hope it lives up, I hope it goes past my expectations, because my expectations are still below. They're not super big. Um, and as I said, Nintendo, I felt has dropped the ball, and I know I'm rambling, and <laughs> um, I haven't been confident in them lately, except for Metroid and Pikmin. Mm. And what I'm seeing here, what I'm hoping, it feels like with stuff like this, you know, and this, yes, I know my quality sucked. It's on 360p. I know it's not super high quality. Let me go up a bit. Um, because that's my internet being shit, but, um, right, <clears throat> back to what I was getting to, because it tells about drop the ball and stuff, you know, we had Mario 3D All-Stars being a limited release, like, why? Why is it a limited release? And why wasn't Mario Galaxy 2 also ported? There's Mario 35th Anniversary, which you can't get anymore, you know, Mario 35. They've done a lot of weird stuff. They've done stuff, some great stuff on Nintendo Switch, but they've also done some not so great stuff on Nintendo Switch. And then it feels a lot of times where Nintendo Switch just feels, especially a lot recently, a lot of the system that feels more for third-party developers than Nintendo themselves. I feel like Nintendo hasn't put out anything super big since the beginning of the Switch's launch. I mean, as I said, no F-Zero, no Star Fox. We only now just got a Metroid Prime remaster. And, you know, where the heck is Metroid Prime 4? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't played any Metroid game, by the way. I just hear Metroid Prime remaster, like, knocked it out of the park. Um, I don't think you can entirely fault me for being so skeptical of Nintendo. What I'm seeing here, what I'm hoping here, 
is that what I'm seeing, what I'm hoping here in Tears of the Kingdom is something that I like about Zelda, especially compared to other Nintendo franchises. Zelda, in my opinion, is their story franchise. It is what they do with their story. It's what they do when they want to tell more story-based games. And that's how I feel with Zelda. I like a lot of Zelda stories. Um, it's one of the big highlights for me in Skyward Sword. Uh, but Breath of the Wild, for me personally, really dropped the ball on the story. I mean, the, the main characters of the story are like, dead? <laughs> it's hard for me to care when they're dead! <laughs> I will be fully real, uh, and like, I get the idea, yes, go to Fikin to like, you know, defend the dead and save the kingdom, save so it's hard for me to entirely care when the main characters are dead. It does feel like here we are focusing more on people who are actually living in the world currently and actually are going to be a little more affected by canon, thankfully. Um, that, and I do feel like this, I feel like Nintendo didn't Nintendo was being very experimental with Breath of the Wild. And didn't fully know what to do with certain aspects of the game. Tuesday Kingdom, now that this trailer has shown, feels a little more confident in what they're doing. It feels what I hope it feel is that it feels closer to a mix of older Zelda stuff mixed with Breath of the Wild. That's what it's feeling to me. And that, from at least from this trailer, and that's what I'm hoping for. But I'm still not 100% sold on Tears of the Kingdom, and I won't be until the game comes out. But this is what I'm getting from this. And... It's what I'm getting from this, and... Got almost half an hour. God. I won't know fully until, you know, the game comes out. That's what I hope. I hope for a closer mix of older Zelda, older 3D Zelda mixed with Breath of the Wild. What Tears of the Kingdom needs to do, what I'm hoping for, is that it needs to convince me that it is the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And not The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, if you know what I mean. It needs to be distinct enough of itself. For example, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, despite reusing assets from Orcarina of Time, is so distinct enough from Orcarina of Time and every other Zelda game that it's not, even though it is an Orcarina of Time sequel, it is not Orcarina of Time 2. It is unique in its own way. That's what Tears of the Kingdom needs to be. It needs to be unique enough in its own way, separate from Breath of the Wild. It needs to feel like its own game, and not just Breath of the Wild 2. And that is what I am ultimately hoping for. That is what all this rambling has come to. That's my big point in this rambling. That's what it's come to. <laughs> That's going to be it for now. I'm going to stop here, I'm going to edit this, and then I'm either going to go to sleep, watch a movie, watch something else, or I'm going to go back to editing Xenoblade. God, that's a lot of editing I have to do. <laughs> but I have a lot to edit. It's going to be it for now. Hope you enjoyed these thoughts. I'm still skeptical, but with this trailer I'm not as skeptical as I was before. And that's a good thing. And I'm sure some people are going to say this trailer spoiled too much. In which case, if you were already sold on The Legend of Zelda Tears Kingdom and you were going to get it anyways, just avoid the damn trailers. Please. I know it can be hard, especially with Twitter, but just please, for the love of God, try your best to avoid stuff until this game came out. Like, just, <laughs> if you're already convinced. But for people like myself who are not convinced, this trailer was very close to what we needed. It ain't no E3 
demonstration, like Breath of the Wild got, but it's hopefully close enough. And I will be interested in playing this game when it comes out. Maybe I'll still try and get it on the disc or something, because Sunny Dark's still kind of a bit for me. Uh, but yeah. See you guys in the next video.